planet travels through space orbiting the sun. Each trip around our sun takes one year. As our planet orbits, it spins on its axes, completing a rotation every 24 hours. Add a pointer and a dial to our planet and you have created a huge clock. As we will see, to design a clock, you must understand the Earth's motion. Our next stop is the North Pole, a great place to create a device for measuring time, a sundial. Let's use this globe to investigate the issues around sundial construction. We'll start at the North Pole. During the summer months, the Earth is tilted towards the sun, creating 24 hours of sunlight at the top of the world. The shadow cast by the extended axes at the North Pole moves across the landscape as the Earth rotates. Placing a dial over this post, we have a sundial. 24 equally spaced radiating lines representing one hour intervals. Every 15 degrees of rotation is equivalent to one hour. This sundial works perfectly, displaying time as the Earth rotates. Let's see how well this type of sundial works in other parts of the world. The equator is the line of latitude that circles the center of the Earth, halfway between the North and South Poles. Let's place our sundial on the equator. The equator passes through Ecuador in South America. Our sundial is located on the equator at longitude 77 degrees west. I will rotate the dial so that 12 noon is pointed north. Notice how the shadow changes as the Earth rotates. Unlike the rotating shadow at the North Pole, the shadow here at the equator just changes length. In the morning it is long, as the day progresses it gets shorter, disappearing at noon, then lengthening again throughout the afternoon. Not a very useful sundial. Let's try another location. I live in the Ottawa Valley in Canada at latitude 45 degrees, halfway between the equator and the North Pole. Our longitude here is 77 degrees west, the same longitude as our sundial in Ecuador. This means the local time here is the same as the local time in Ecuador. With the sun shining directly at the Ottawa Valley, I have set both our local sundial and the North Pole sundial to 12 noon. The sundial at the equator is unable to display time on this dial. Now that our two sundials are synchronized, let's check some other times. I will rotate the globe until our local sundial shows 10 a.m. Moving north, we see that our pole sundial does not agree. It displays the correct time as 10.30. The local sundial, here in the Ottawa Valley, is displaying the wrong time. Setting our local dial to 11 a.m. reveals a similar problem. The sundial at the North Pole indicates the correct time is 11.15.
Setting our local sundial to 12 noon and moving north, we find that this time the sundial at the North Pole agrees. The reason the sundial works so well at the North Pole is because at the pole, the gnomon, the shadow casting post, is parallel to the Earth's axes. The gnomon at the, the equator is actually at 90 degrees to the Earth's axis, and the gnomon in the Ottawa Valley is actually at 45 degrees to the Earth's axis. Aligning the sundial so that each gnomon is parallel to the Earth's axis solves the problem. Our sundials are now repositioned with each gnomon parallel to the Earth's axes. From this perspective we can see that all three sundials display the same time. This is true when they share the same longitude. The key to sundial construction is to design your sundial so that the gnomon is parallel to the Earth's axis. The next chapter explains how to design and construct a sundial for different latitudes. We know this sundial works well at the North Pole, and to make it work at other latitudes, we have to align the gnomon with the Earth's axes. Now, I'll, I'll do that here. We're at latitude 45 degrees right now, and uh, that means that I have to tilt the gnomon at an angle of 45 degrees and towards the north. So I'll point this north and estimate 45 degrees. There we are. Theoretically, we have a working sundial. I think you can see the problem. The sun isn't shining on our dial. There's no shadow to work with. The sun's actually shining on the back of our dial. There is a solution to this problem, another design of sundial. We'll take a look at that next. Here is a design of sundial that solves this problem. The gnomon is the edge of this angled card, and the dial lies flat. The sun shines on this surface. A sundial like this must be designed for specific latitudes. For instance, this gnomon is at an angle of 45 degrees, and the radiating lines are no longer 15 degrees apart. They have been drawn to accurately represent the time here at latitude 45 degrees. If you were designing a sundial for latitude 30 degrees, the gnomon would be at an angle of 30 degrees, and the radiating lines would have to be calculated for this latitude. Let's take a look at how to construct a sundial like this one. Any size of a sundial can be constructed, we will construct our sundial from Bristol board, starting with a rectangular piece 14 centimeters by 25 centimeters. Draw lines 1.5 centimeters in from each end. Draw one line 2 centimeters down from the top. Draw a line down the center of the card. Erase the corner construction lines. Next, draw lines radiating from the base at the angles shown. Use a protractor. These angles are correct for latitude 45 degrees north. Label the dial as shown. The 
gnomon has a base of 12 centimeters and is cut at an angle of 45 degrees. A simple way to make this gnomon is to cut a 12 centimeter square along its diagonal. Tape the gnomon along the center line as shown. A small bracket can be created to hold the gnomon vertically. If you've completed constructing one of these sundials, here's how you set it up. The simplest way to set these up is check the time. It's 10 a.m. right now. Find a nice location, a sheltered location in your house where the sun comes in on a windowsill or on a table. Set your sundial, rotate it until the shadow from your gnomon indicates 10 a.m. and then pin it there. A piece of tape on each side will hold it down and as the day progresses, as the earth rotates, the shadow will change and indicate the time. This next sequence shows the shadow moving from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. As the earth turns we can watch as the shadow progresses moving towards 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. Moving on past 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. the last number on our dial. Now the gnomon, this shadow casting surface here, must point north and in fact when you've set it using your clock it is pointing north so it's indicating north for you as well. It's like a compass. If you had your sundial set up outside and came out at night on a, a clear evening and sighted along the top edge of the gnomon, you would find that it was pointing at Polaris, the North Star. This sundial is designed for latitude 45 degrees, but it will work reasonably well at any latitude between 40 degrees and 50 degrees north. Dimensions for different latitudes can be found at our website, hylaroad.com. This is a sundial hour line angle calculator. Enter your latitude, click calculate, and the angles are displayed. This calculator is in the projects area of our website. You can find other sundial calculators on the internet.